use the ruler and compasses only in this question. So we have a quadrilateral and the want is to construct the locus of points inside this quadrilateral that are six centimeters from S and equidistant from QP and QR. So if it's six centimeters from S, what you will do is you will open your compass to six centimeters, put it over here and draw an arc like this over here. This distance, this should be six centimeters based on how much you've opened the compass. Then it was saying that in the next part that it's equidistant from QP and QR. So for that, what you will do is, since we have a common point between QP and QR, which is Q, we will draw an angle bisector. So to draw an angle bisector at Q, you will first open the compass a few centimeters, let's say four centimeters. So once you've opened the compass to four centimeters, you put it at Q and then you draw an arc over here. And keeping the measurement the same, you will draw another arc over here. Then once again, we're not going to change the measurement of the compass. It's going to stick to four centimeters. You're going to put it over here. And then from here, you will draw another arc. And from here, you will draw another arc. So once you've drawn these arcs, you connect Q and pass it to the center of the, the last arc that we drew. And this is your angle bisector. Then it says shade the region inside the quadrilateral PQRS containing points that are more than six centimeters from S and closer to Q than to Q than to QP. So basically it's going to be your region is going to be somewhere over here because this is where your arc was from S and this was your angle bisector. This is the rough drawing. So when you draw it correctly, this is the region that you mark because it's closer to QR and it's greater than six centimeters from S. Find the value of K. So first we open the powers. So whenever we power inside the bracket and outside the bracket, we multiply them. So K times negative two is equal to Y to the power of five which is negative 2k. So since we have similar bases on both sides, that means we can put the powers equal to each other. Negative 2k equals to 5 and k is 5 over negative 2. Then it says simplify x to the power of 1 over 3 over 2x whole cube. So what we're going to do is we're going to distribute the power once again x to the power of 1 over 3 whole power 3 over 2x whole cube, which is going to be x over 8x cube. Since there's an x in the numerator and denominator, what we can do is we can further solve the powers and simplify the fraction by doing x to the power of 1 minus 3 over eight by one minus three, because whenever we have similar bases being divided, we subtract the powers. So it's gonna be x to the power of negative two over eight, which can be rewritten as one over eight x squared. In a sale, the price of a quote is reduced by 25%. The sale price is 120. Calculate the price of the quote before the sale. So if the sale price is 120, that means it's basically 75%. So 120 over X, the original price, equals to 75 over 100. 120 times 100 divided by 75 equals to X. I just cross multiplied 120 by 100 and swapped 75 and X. So now we have 12,000 over 75. So if we simplify this, both are divisible by 5. So that's going to be 160 equals to x.
y is inversely proportional to the cube of x when x is half y is 24. Find the formula for y in terms of x. So y is inversely proportional to the cube of x. That's going to be y That's going to be y equals to k over x cube. Now, 24 equals to k over 1 over 2 cube, which is going to be 24 times 1 over 8, because 2 cube is 8. And 24 divided by 8 is 3. So 3 equals to k, which means y is 3 over x cube. That is your formula. Find the value of k, find the value of y when x is 1 over 3. y was 3 over x cube. So y is going to be 3 over 1 over 3 cube, which is 3 over 1 over 27. So 3 divided by 1 over 27 is the same as 3 times 27. Whenever we're dividing a whole number or a fraction by a fraction, what we do is we take the reciprocal of the second fraction and change division into multiplication. So 3 times 27 is going to equal to 81. On Monday, 40 adults and 20 children visit a museum. On Tuesday, 30 adults and 35 children visit the museum. The cost of an adult ticket is $2.50 and the cost of a child ticket is $2. This information can be represented by the matrices M and N. Work out M times N. So what we will do is we'll multiply the first row with the column. And then we will do the same over here. We'll multiply the second row with the given column. So that's going to be 40, 20, 30, 35 times 2.5 and 2, which is going to give us 40 times 2.5 plus times 2 and then 30 times 2.5 plus 35 times 2. This equals 100 plus 40 and 75 plus 70 which is 140 and 145. Explain what the numbers in your answer to part A1 represent. Basically, that represents the total cost of tickets on Monday and Tuesday. The museum increases the cost of tickets by 10%. Complete matrix P to show the new ticket cost. So if you go back to the cost, that's matrix N. So it's increasing by 10%. So first, let's find 10% of 2.5. That's going to be 0 0.25. So this becomes 2.5 plus 0 0.25, which is 2.75. And then to find the 10% of 2, 2 times 10 over 100, which is 0 0.2. So that's going to be 2 plus 0 0.2, which is 2.2. So your matrix P is going to be 2.75 and 2.20. The first four terms of a sequence, find an expression for the nth term of the sequence. So if you look at the numerator, is a difference of 5 between each. And if you look at the denominator, there are square numbers, 4 square, 
5 square, 6 square, and 7 square. So for the numerator, it's a multiple of 5. So let's assume it's 5n. But if we do 5 times 1, that's going to be 5, not 12. So that means we need to add 7. So 5n plus 7 is now going to give us, for the first term, 5n plus 7 would be 12. For the second, it's going to be 17. The first 5n plus 7. Now for the denominator. Now there's square numbers. If we do n square, 1 square will be 1, not 16. Which means if we do n plus 3 square, since the first term is 4 square, so 1 plus 3 square is going to be 16. 2 plus 3 square is going to be 5. It's going to be 25. The denominator is going to be n plus 3 whole square, which means our complete fraction is going to be 5n plus 1 over n plus 3 whole square. This is your nth term. Question 21 says, write x square plus 10x plus 6 in the form of x plus a whole square plus b. So that's completing square form. So for completing square form, basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to go from a square plus 2ab plus b square to a plus b whole square. Now in this equation, what we're going to do is we're not going to take 6 as b square. b square is what we're going to figure out. Our a square is x square. 2ab is 10x. And b square is unknown over here. So let's figure out the value of b first. Since 10x is 2ab, which means b will be 5. 10x divided by 2x, and that is 5 over here. So that means we can rewrite this as x square plus 2 times x times 5 plus 5 square, and then minus 5 square as well. And 6 comes as it is. The reason why we're doing minus 5 square is because plus 5 square is a new term that we added in this equation. So since it's a new term and we're adding it, that means we have to subtract it as well to maintain a balance. So that's why we add the negative 5 square. So now we rewrite x square plus 2 times x plus 5 plus 5 square in the a plus b whole square format, which will be x plus 5 whole square minus 25 plus 6. And that can be simplified to minus 19. So a over here is 5 and b is 19. Use your part to a to solve x square plus 10x plus 6 equals to 0, giving your answer in the form of p plus minus square root of q. So what we had was x plus 5 whole square minus 19. So now I put it equal to 0. I'm going to move the 19 to the other side. So to get rid of the square, I'm going to square root both sides. So that's going to give me x plus 5 equals to plus minus square root of 19 x is going to be negative 5 plus minus square root of 19. So p is negative 5 and q is 19. Express as a single fraction in its simplest form. So it's going to be the same as what we did in the previous question with unlike denominators. We're going to make the denominators equal by multiplying the first fraction by x plus 5. And I'm going to multiply the second fraction by x minus 7. That's going to be 3 times x plus 5 over x minus 7 times x plus 5 plus 2 times x minus 7 over x plus 5 times x minus 7. That becomes 3x plus 15 plus 2x minus 14 divided by x minus 7 times x plus 5.
combine the like terms 3x plus 2x is 5x 15 minus 14 is 1 so 5x plus 1 over x minus 7 times x plus 5 this is your fraction in its simplest form question 23 gives us triangle a and triangle b are drawn on the grid Describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle B. So if we look at this, there is no translation, there is no transformation, but there is a rotation because the shape, like the direction of the shape has changed. So first we need to figure out the center. So center in this case is going to be negative, it's going to be one negative one. The reason why that's the center because I pick a point over here, which is two, two, and this over here is negative two, zero. If we compare the angle over here, that is, you can use a protractor even, that is 90 degrees. So there has been a rotation of 90 degrees of this point from here to here. And the center over here is one, negative one. Your center is one, negative one, and there's a 90 degree rotation clockwise direction. Transformation P is represented by the matrix negative 1, 2, 0, 0, negative 1, 2. P maps triangle A onto triangle C. On the grid, draw the triangle C. So first, let's write down the coordinates of A. We have negative 2, 0. We have negative 2 and negative 4. And then we have negative 4 and 0 again. So this is getting multiplied by negative 1, 2, 0, 0, negative 1, 2 times negative 2, 0, negative 2, negative 4, and negative 4, 0. So once again, first row with the column, then with the second column and third column, and then the second row repeats the same step. So it's going to be negative one over two times negative two plus zero, then negative one over two times negative two plus zero, negative one over two times negative four plus zero. Zero times negative two is zero, Negative 1 over 2 times 0 is 0. Then again, it's going to be negative 1 over 2 times negative 4, which is going to be positive 2. And over here is 0 plus 0. Because 0 times negative 4 is 0, and negative 1 over 2 times 0 is 0. So that's going to give us 1, 0, 1, 2, and 2, 0. So we're going to plot these on the grid for triangle C. One zero is over here. One, two is over here. And two, zero is over here. This is our triangle. Question 24 says a group of office workers are each asked to record the distance P kilometers they travel to work. The results for some of their journeys are shown in the histogram. So we have the frequency density and distance. There were 20 workers in the 0 to 5 group. There were 12 workers in 20 to 40. Complete the histogram. So frequency density is frequency over the class width. 
So frequency is 12. Class width is 20, which is 40 minus 20. So 12 divided by 20 is going to equal to 0 0.6. So we're going to plot 0 0.6. It's going to be this. And calculate the percentage of workers who traveled more than 20 kilometers. So more than 20 was 12. That's 20. Plus 12 over here, so you have to figure out the frequency for these two, for the total frequency, because they have not mentioned that. So for this interval, frequency is going to be six times the class width, which is five, so that's 30. And then the frequency for the second is going to be 1.8 times the class width, which is 10. So that's 18. So now total frequency is 30 plus 20 plus 18 plus 12, which is 50 plus 30. So that's 80. So your probability is going to be 12 over 80. Percentage of workers who travel more than 20. So that's 12 over 80 times 100. Zero gets canceled out. That's going to be two. That's going to be three. That's going to be five. So 15%. Question 25 says the algebraic fraction can be simplified to give this. Find the value of A and B. 2x square minus 5x plus a over x square minus 16 is equal to 2x plus b over x plus 4. We can rewrite x square minus 16 as x minus 4 times x plus 4 because of difference of perfect squares x is being squared and 16 is 4 square. 2x square minus 5x plus a comes as it is. Now, since the x minus 4 is gone in the final answer, the simplified one, so that means 2x square minus 5x plus a is the same as 2x plus b times x minus 4. So now if we expand this, that's going to be 2x square minus 8x plus xb minus 4b. So now if we compare 2x square and 2x square, it's the same. So for x, the coefficient of x is negative 5 on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, it's 8, negative 8 plus b. So that means B is going to be 3. Now to find A, A is the same as negative 4B. So A is negative 4 times 3, which is negative 12. So A is negative 12. That is your answer.